Quintano. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Sarah. I'm stoked too. And I'm super excited about the topic too. You know, I'm going to go back a little bit because I come from a culture where, you know, sex and intimacy is, um, it's interesting, right? Because a lot of people think of Latin people as being like really passionate or really sexual and really, you know, into that stuff. And I think there is certainly a, a vein of that. But then because of religious um, traditions, we also have a lot of a vein of uh, uh, almost shame about sex and enjoying sexuality or sexuality. And particularly, I think in women, you know, if women enjoy uh, sex, then they're sluts, right? So, um, so that was a bit of a transition. Um, I think all uh, physical activities are important and I enjoy them. <laughs> and I enjoy them a lot. <laughs> um, so I, I've always quite, um, I've always quite enjoy sexuality. Yeah. I, I, um, I think it was a, an area where I felt free from the beginning of my life with sprinkles of shame, yeah. right? With sprinkles of like, uh, no, uh, this is not to be enjoyed too much. Um, only certain kind of women enjoy this too much, right? Um, and so, although I think I've had a healthy relationship with my sexuality, you know, the sprinkles of shame were quite strong and uncomfortable, really, really kind of uncomfortable. Um, just recently, just very recently, I was reading a book and in that book, there is a quote from the author and I love it because there's something like, like it's, this, it's called the spirituality of wine. And so it has a very, um, religious view um, and it says something like the senses were created so we can enjoy creation all of God's creation and I love that you know I love that and I think that's what happened that's what's happened to me through my journey of understanding uh, the nature of spirituality and how our sexuality is just an extension of that, you know? So um, I feel more open. I feel more free. Um, in general terms, I don't tend to take things personally in that department. And I'm forgiving, you know, I'm forgiving with the experience. Uh, I also tend to freak out less, you know, I'm 51 years old. <laughs> so when you're 51, things change. <laughs> so, you know, it's just what happens with the body. The body changes and things that used to be just are a little different. And so that's been really nice. It's been super nice to have this understanding within that context, right? Of aging and, and sexuality changing. And actually, actually, what's been fascinating is that um, I've been able to discover a joy about sexuality um, that's been fantastic and new. So that's been really wonderful. It's been really wonderful. Um, I've been with my current partner, my husband for since 2003. So that's like what, 18 years, right? Like 18 years around. And so it's been fascinating to find out, to discover and to experience a completely brand new, fascinating, wonderful, experience 
And I think a lot of it has to do with this grace hmm. of um, not freaking out about things, you know, and just sort of gliding through experiences with curiosity and openness. Yeah. So that part, Sarah, I am just like tickled for, you know, it's just, it's just really, uh, it's just really wonderful. Um, <laughs> freaking out looks like, oh my God, what is this? Why is this happening? Or why is this not happening? You know, like, why is this not happening? Um, and giving it a lot of meaning, like, is it the right person, right? This person doesn't know how to do this. Um, I don't know how to do this. Yeah, but, you know, although I, I don't tend to go there a lot, I have to be perfectly honest. I don't tend to go to, I'm not doing something right. I tend to go to, this person doesn't doing something right. <laughs> why, why don't you know how to do this? <laughs> um, and giving it a lot of meaning, you know? Yeah. So, so, uh, so not doing that looks like having a conversation as if we were doing anything else. There's something about sex, isn't there? There's something about sex that feels really personal, that feels very defining, um, that we don't talk as if we were talking about something else. So what, what started occurring, occurring to me uh, when things were happening or not happening or, you know, when I was having an experience that was not, let's say, the desire experience. Um, I, I realized that I didn't have to worry about it. And also that I didn't even have to talk about it. I had a deep trust I don't know how, but I had like a really deep, deep trust, a very intuitive trust that, you know, things will, will work out. Things will get there. And this, it, the, I remember it was like, a, 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 some people would say a long period of time, right? It was like six, a six month situation where uh, the experience that I was having, it was not the, Sire experienced. And so I had a, a dear friend and I was telling her about this, you know, we women talk. I don't know if guys talk. I think guys don't talk about those things, but we women talk. And she was saying, you, you absolutely have to tell them. And I was like, you know, I kind of have the sense that if I did, it would freak him out and it would make things worse. So I'm just going to kind of not do that. And I was very comfortable. I was, you know, I wasn't suffering. I wasn't feeling bad. I wasn't um, judging him or me. It was just sort of like, this is what's happening right now. But I know that um, this is gonna change. I had the certainty that my body was going to catch up. And so it was nice. It was nice because it was just sort of experiencing um, the situation um, with kindness, you know, with kindness and, and love and, and still uh, I like, I like the experience very much, you know, it was a, a wonderful experience. Um, and so that was really cool. It was really cool to go through that with a lot of love. And then, you know, as other things happened, not making it a big deal. I guess this is what happened. What happened is there has been an absence of judgment of what does this mean, you know? What does this mean about my body? What does this mean about aging? What does this mean about my partner? What does this mean about my performance? What about this mean about his performance? What about, you know, like all that. And so it's just sort of lighting things up. And that's been really wonderful because 
think there's something about being lighthearted, you know, and, and fun, you know, and joyful, and just sort of dealing with whatever happens, whatever comes up, <laughs> with whatever comes up, and just kind of in a, you know, in a moment to, in a moment to moment situation, you know, like a moment to moment experience. You know, it's funny you mentioned food because uh, because I am a foodie and I experience what you just said all the time. I have a very strict goal about what this is going to taste like, look like, feel like, smell like, everything, right? And so it, it's softening to me. <laughs> Hopefully it'll soften in the same way as with my sexuality. But for whatever reason, not with food, you know, like I walk into a place, and I have an idea, and I just I I I had a te- I have a tendency to notice things. Just my my visual I have a visual sensitivity about things, you know. About I can tell when things are crooked and the whole thing, and so I notice things that other people may not, and make a lot of meaning out of it. And a while back, I noticed that. I would almost go in there with a mind. And then if something little happened, then my experience would go downhill. Mm. You know? And I was like, I cannot believe this. And then I was a waitress. So it's like, oh my God, why don't they do this? Blah, 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 blah. So the whole entire time that I'm talking, right? That, that I'm eating, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. My mind is going and going and going. So fortunately, that has not happened with my sexuality. Mm. But I can see, because you know, because it is it is marked with my eating experiences, I can see how um, it really takes us away from joy. Yeah, so there's almost like two things, right? The fantasy of our mind. Yeah. And then really discover, I don't know if this is correct, but like, the fantasy of the moment, you know, and what's happening right in front of us. Yeah. Uh, and so lately I have been discovering that, you know, just in this moment. And it's, it was very surprising to be perfectly honest with you. It's very surprising because a lot of women and a lot of people talk about, um, you know, as they age, they, stop enjoying sex and you know there are some things right where people start hurting and all this stuff um it's just not as um it's physically difficult so i was kind of considering you know well well maybe that's gonna happen you know and then surprise (laughs) so wonderful see and that was really wonderful sarah too is it was really wonderful to find out that you think like I thought I knew everything there was to know about, about my body. I mean, you know, I've been with it for 50 years, right? So you're just like, no, I know it. And I do know it, but just discovering more and discovering different things has been surprising. And I think that's been wonderful. And that I think has to do with this um, position of, well, let's see what happens. If I could do that in a restaurant, that would be like that would be like wonderful <laughs> because you know because I I noticed a while back I, as soon as I come in I'm already yeah and I think that could happen to you in the bedroom right yeah you know and as I'm telling you this what's coming to mind is that happens to me sometimes too. You know, I come in with a menu and I'm fussy about, well, you know, I don't like the sauce, I don't like this, I don't like, could you change that? Could you change this? And I notice, I've noticed that probably the last year and a half or so, how that impedes joy. Yeah. Because we're not with what's going on. It's, you know, it's like my menu of things. And, you know, actually, as I'm thinking about this right now, when that does happen, I notice my, my mind is anticipating, as you were saying. Right? Like, no, 
this doesn't go there. This goes, <laughs> it goes here. No, <laughs> you know, this doesn't move this way. This moves, it's supposed to be moving this way because this way is how, you know, this journey begins. And so, although it's absolutely true that recently, you know, it's been free flowing, there are moments where this, this other thing pops up. And there are moments where I notice and there are moments where I don't. Always. Yes. Yes. So it's, it's really interesting as we were talking, I was like, no, hold on a second. You do get caught up on uh, how things are done, mm. right? Because we have, I think we tend to have such a strong uh, recipe book about things, you know, about everything. For those of you that have gone and had dinner with me before or lunch, I'm, I'm not, what some people have called a nightmare <laughs> because I was like, can I have more of this? Can I have more of that? Can I have less of this? You know, I, I tend never to order exactly from the menu. Uh, and I feel quite comfortable asking for that, right? There is something about that in this department, I think that, you know, when, when I, you're anticipating a lot, you're like, <laughs> you're like here, there, this way, no, and it can be quite a lot, you know, it can be quite a lot. So I think the other side of what you were talking about is just kind of like, chilling out a little just you know just chilling out just chill just relax a little you know and and both my husband and I are deeply in love with each other we enjoy this part of our lives a lot uh he's particularly patient with me uh, <laughs> he said just chill out a little <laughs> just relax, <laughs> come down, <laughs> because I'm anticipating, you know, and yeah. so I am, I am making my, my recipe known, and so I've learned to, <laughs> and I need to learn this a lot more, but it's just like, just relax, just chill, <laughs> just calm down, be patient, right, just be patient, because based on what happened, you know, you know what, what I wanted to tell you, Sarah, I just realized this moment is how your beliefs show up in this, in this area of our lives too. So just as we were talking, what I realized is that um, one, I guess, one of the, the things that is important for me is to speak my mind, is not to be quiet, you know, it's not to be afraid of my expression. Um, probably for historical reasons, I don't know, but I just feel strong about um, speaking my mind. Up. Um, and sometimes too much, you know, like sometimes I, I know that it goes to the extreme, like, no, I want to tell you what I think. No, the fact that I'm a woman doesn't mean that I have to be quiet, right, or submissive or anything. And so it's interesting because I sometimes it kind of like it comes up with a strength, with an intensity in my life, in other parts of my life. And so as we were speaking, what I'm seeing right now is that that is also showing up here. Right, like, no, I'm gonna tell you what I want. No, 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 you know, I think I have this experience with women um, where there are so many women that just spend a lifetime of speaking their minds and their hearts, right? And not expressing themselves. And so I've taken exactly the opposite approach. And so, of course, if we have a core belief, it's gonna show up in this area of our lives.
yeah I mean I've got the classic lady psychology of must please it's about pleasing it's not about pleasing myself it's not about doing what I want and that's been a theme for my life and then that also has been a theme and letting go of both of those letting go of that generally has been not letting it go like just not believing it so much anymore I suppose um is a bit yeah it's that free is that freedom from those things yeah isn't it it's fascinating because you know what you're calling the lady the lady mentality the lady psychology I observed that as a child and I, I would ask myself very early on I was like this makes like no sense a very, I mean, very early on in life, I got in trouble for it, right? And so I think my my uh, my solution to that was to become a little rebel. No, 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 yeah. right? <laughs> so I'm noticing right now. It's so funny. I'm noticing right now how that shows up. No, not here. No, not here. <laughs> You know, I was like, chill, just relax for a moment. So that's that's really uh that's really fascinating. It's really fascinating how our psychology doesn't stop in the bedroom, it just continues. It just continues and shows up. So this is this is great. This is really great. This was worth. Absolutely, every moment. I mean, this is a big insight for me in this moment. You know how because this this because this little um, belief, Sarah, has shown up in a lot of areas of my life where I have experienced struggle. Mm. In struggle, what I mean by struggle is. Um, you know, I, I migrated from Mexico to the States when I was very young, so I have to be very independent. So that helped my strength and develop like a sense of, I can do this. Mm. But sometimes, so one of the areas where I um, struggled with was trusting, like you're saying, just trusting the moment, right? Mm. Trusting people, right, around me asking for help, like when you're moving furniture, for example, that whole thing. Yeah. And of course, also in this area, right? Yeah. This, this, it, it, it's interesting because I had to be independent and being strong has helped me a lot, you know? Um, and it's also kind of like, like coming to the party with something and yeah. not being in the moment. So this is this is this is great. This is great. Well, you know, and how I was telling you that lately I have been just really uh, in a different place. We've been discovering different, a different, deeper experience, super enjoyable, and that's what's been missing. That 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 is what's been missing. This this recipe. Mm. And the the joy, the, the the depth, even even the body sensation, has just really moved to a different place. Because this part is missing. That that little bit of I can't believe it. <laughs> this this little bit comes up every so often. This little bit of Speak your mind all the time. Don't, you must not be quiet. You know, and, and it's tricky. So if you're listening to this, I mean, definitely I do think that um, it's important to speak your mind, you know, like you're saying all that. But it can be taken to the hump degree, like, like in my case, you know. And I think what happened is that I observed so many women growing up that were all about pleasing, that were all about serving, that were all about um, becoming invisible, really, and just sort of um, like literally being of service. 
that very, very young, I remember, I was like, that makes no sense. I mean, that, that, that just really was a very strong thing for me as a child and, you know, growing up. <laughs> and so I must have come up with this thing about you will speak your mind all the time, no matter what. <laughs> just so, you know. So if you want something, say it. If you want more of it, say it. If you want less of it, say it. If you want, I don't know, if you want your salad with the dressing on the side, but if you don't, you know, if they don't have salmon, but they can do something else, they can go next door, then go and eat. I mean, this whole entire thing became about not becoming invisible, mm -hmm. right? And not, not being just a tool of service. Yeah. which I have seen so many women in my life be. You know, I've spoken with women that have had five children and never have had an orgasm, never. It's not uncommon and it's not uncommon with women of, uh, I don't know if, if this is true or not, but of certain age and of certain cultures, I'm, just, I'm sure there are women now today that don't know what an orgasm is because, um, because they don't. And so I was like, what do you mean? You know, there are women that have never seen their private parts. They've never seen their vagina. And I was like, you need to get a mirror. You need to look at yourself. You know, so all that thing, all that thing, uh, I was like, how does this happen? How does it happen that you are a mother of four or five or you're a woman in your 40s and you have never had an orgasm, right? How does that happen? And so, so as I'm speaking to you, what I'm seeing in my life is that I, I have this theme of, of women being able to enjoy themselves, being able to speak their minds, right? Uh, being able to not be of service all the time, um, flowering, owning the space. And I guess it became so strong for me that I probably tilted a little bit too much to the other side. You know, as I'm, spe as I'm speaking to you, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is what I'm realizing. It's, it sounds a uh a little bit like the thing the, the thing we get to see and I've done this I've done this in my own life in different areas we get to see a thing in it and we have the awareness to not just be what you know to not just become what we're surrounded by we have this awareness to step in a different direction to see that but I feel like if there's fear of this, then it's then it becomes about trying to hold ourselves away from it because we're yeah. scared of it. And so we kind of end up with a similar result with the, with the opposite. Like that's how tipping on the other way feels for me. It's if there's if there's fear attached to it some, somehow. I don't know if they or if our existence is pinned onto this this thought. It's like I have to, to speak my mind in order that I exist. It becomes a strong compulsion. It's a strong compulsion. <laughs> it's a strong compulsion. Yeah, exactly, you know, because there's this con constant resistance to if it kind of just starts looking like it might go in that direction, there's like, no, <laughs> you know? I mean, like, nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. But it could happen, it could be turned like that, you know. So no, I'm just gonna be very clear about this now. Right. So yeah, it's very effortful. Mm. It's very, very effortful. So yes, in the absence of that, that's happened, and I didn't even realize it really until right now that we're talking, but in the absence of that, what's happened is there's been more of a joy, right? And, and more of a, 
pleasure, more pleasure. Because mm. it's not, because the attention is not hypersensitive on this other thing, right? It's not like, okay, be careful with this thing, right? This thing that makes no sense to you, this things that you don't like, this thing that mm. it's caused so much upset to other women. So when, when it's not worried with that, of course, you can be fully here. But I didn't know that that's what was happening, to be honest with you, until this moment. Yeah. The whole sensation of everything when you're actually there is so wildly different to when you're not. Like, in my experience, they're like nightmares. So wildly different because, you know, it's, it's so um, subtle. It's so subtle, my rules, you know? This yes, this no, this yes, this no, this yes, this no. And I have to say that it's pervasive. It's pervasive in, I have a position in life of I'm going to speak up, which, which I think it can be beautiful, you know? I love the freedom that comes from that when it comes from that space of, it makes sense. And you know, it continues to be very helpful. So it's almost like salt, you know? I, um, I, I used to put salt before tasting my food. I just would add salt to my food, right? Um, it was just the thing I did. And so it seems like this is the same thing, you know? Before I taste anything, I'm going to tell you my rules because I'm going to speak up, <laughs> right? So you end up with a salty dish. So in the absence of the salt, yeah, you can taste the vegetables more. You know, you can taste the fruit more. You can taste the spices more because it's not. It's not. The saltiness is not the prevalent ingredient. I guess that's what's happening now. That's such a wonderful analogy. Adding salt to your food before you taste it. Because not only does your, your palate just gets accustomed to it, so you don't even notice that you're doing it, which is exactly the same as when you're bringing something to the party that you have no idea you're bringing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, look, I think there is something, you know, this is like, this is not to be like, it's in the moment, right? It's in the moment because I do think there is something about um, just speaking your mind. I think there's something that can be helpful. Like salt, right? Like salt can really bring out some beautiful flavors. Yeah. Right? Like the avocado, I don't know if you like avocado, but I love avocado. So like, it's it just really, does something for for food uh, but it's nice to, to taste it before you put it on right it's just sort of like let me see let me see yeah. uh, it's interesting oh my god Sarah you know it's almost like I uh, I'm so you know the thing is I, can't, I don't know if this is true but I guess it worries me or it pre preoccupies me or it, it, I think about all the women around the world um, that are not able to do this, that are not able to speak their mind. I don't know, I just, even women like my age that feel old, right? Women that are younger than me that feel old. And so it's almost as I've taken this flag, right, of no, you know, uh, we, are, we are complete human beings with strong voices and with bodies that I can feel, I can feel wonderful. And so it's interesting how um, attached I've become to that. We're the ones that get to change it. We're the ones that get to have conversations like this and put them on a cover for them. And, and I think that's that's a gift. That's an enormous gift. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And me being like 
hypersensitive in my bedroom mm. doesn't help that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like me, me, me being uh, attached to that in my bedroom, it doesn't help. No. No, it doesn't help that. It doesn't help that. Sarah, it does not help that. So, so, so you know, isn't it fascinating how uh, you can see it's fascinating. It's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me how psychology becomes so invisible. By psychology, I mean, you know, thought, you know, how we experience it and consciousness and all the stuff. It's just so, so invisible. Yeah. And the experience of being in mind also includes the bedroom. You know, and joy, joy and fun, and fun includes the bedroom. And yeah. so, but it's fascinating to me how these things, at least in my experience, they oscillate. I can see them sometimes, and then they become completely invisible. Like like this for me, this conversation has been absolutely insightful for me personally, because it's allowed me to see. Um, something that I didn't know and to discover oh wait this is the reason why lately there is the heightened experience of joy and and fun and um, oh, just great sexuality you can, you can taste everything else because there's no salt in there, you know? Yeah. That's something. Isn't that something, Sarah? Ah, uh, it's incredible. You know what? Another thing that I like about what we're talking about is um, it was unbeknownst to me, you know? I didn't try to, to do, make this happen. Because, you know, to be perfectly honest, I mean, I had a pretty good sexual life before so it's not like I was trying to do something but it was the generosity of life you know it's like okay hold here, here here's one more goodie right here's here's one more one more dish um and, and the reason why I think that's really powerful is because it really shows how we don't have to try so hard you know Gabriela. <laughs> you don't have to try so hard, Sarah. <laughs> you know what I, I really like about your your project is extending our knowledge of how we function as human beings to the bedroom. Like it doesn't stop in the right, it doesn't stop. The carpet doesn't stop. Yeah. In the threshold of the bedroom. It actually continues to the whole thing. Yeah. But, but for me, the most powerful thing for me about this conversation, Sarah, is this thing about the floor, the carpet doesn't stop in the in the bedroom, right? So of course, if you have a tendency. Or I believe whatever you want to call it, it's going to spill into the bedroom. So maybe the carpet is not the specific um, believe or not. Maybe it's our psychology or you know doesn't stop there. The wonderful thing is that <clears throat> there is just an infinite, an infinite space that can show up. You know. Yeah, and that can show up anywhere, right? Yeah. Even if you're not trying, like even if it's not your intention, it can just be like a new, you know, just something new that shows up. And that's just lovely. The, the appreciation of that, you know, we're able to, I, I, I'm able to experience appreciation when we're in the moment, you know, when I'm not so preoccupied with all the million women that haven't had orgasms around the world. <laughs> it's just me, 
in the bedroom, right? <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> it's really funny what we do, you know? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, thank you. It just, this was a joy for me. This was really uh, insightful for me. Thank you. Thank you so much.